Audio video screen capture technologies are able to record in real time a video of what's happening on your computer screen while at the same time recording your voice, describing or explaining what's happening. So for example, we could capture the action of pointing a mouse at a picture on your computer screen and saying, here is a picture of a smiley face. Um, we can capture that as a file um, and send it to another person. They can play back the file and see and hear what was recorded. Here is a picture of a smiley face on their own computer. I first encountered this technology being used to show how to perform specific tasks in software training guides. Um, I've used it myself for example to show my students how to use features of the Pebble Paddy portfolio uh, toolkit. Uh, for example, to view one of your assets in Pebble Pad, simply click on the view option. From the drop down menu, select my assets. From the view assets panel, you can use the scrolling bar to find the asset that you want to view. Click on it and from the slide out menu, select view this asset. Your asset will appear in a pop-up window. I subsequently saw a colleague at Manchester Met, Nick Scott, using video screen captures to provide tutorials for accounting students. And that got me thinking about using the technology for feedback on any work that I could display on my own computer screen. And for some time I've been using the comments tools in Track Changes in MS Word um, to annotate electronically submitted pieces of coursework. Um, here's an example of that. I've simply added uh, comments to a particular document which are really sort of my way of familiarising myself with the document. Um, standard practice on my programme is then to write um, a written pro forma for the students that provides additional depth uh, to the feedback um, so that they can improve things and take things forward. Um, however, instead, I decided to try uh, something different um, and instead of using the written pro forma, I thought I would try an audio video screen capture for the same purpose. Uh, so this is an example of the sort of thing that um, I now give. Hi Joe, um, it's Rod Cullen here with feedback on your learning, teaching and assessment matrix. Um, you might want to have a copy of this printed out somewhere so that um, you can look at it while we're actually going through the various points that I'm going to make. Um, First thing I want to say is, um, related to this comment here, there's an awful lot of assessment um, in this unit. Three pieces of in-course assessment um, and a two-hour exam um, might seem uh, a bit over the top for a 10-credit unit, so you might want to give that some thought um, when you come to actually putting this into practice. Um, uh, in terms of the second comment that I want to make, you've got two learning outcomes over here. Um, explain, understand and evidence the concept of species area relationships um, and understand the main theories that seek to explain species area relationships on islands. Um, I think there's probably a, a bit of overlap in there um, and also you're using some ambiguous terminology like understand um, which is not particularly useful to your students and we talked about that um, in the classroom session how we might make learning outcomes less ambiguous. Um, so you might want to go back to the, the, the guide to writing learning outcomes to give that a little bit more thought. I think that that example there offers a, a different visual dimension to my feedback that suits this particular task very well. Um, and that technique has proved very popular with my students. Many learning and assessment tasks that we give to our students have these visual or design components. Um, here are just a few examples that I came up with. Um, including things like flowcharts, uh, designs, whether that be um, artistic designs or whether they're designs in the engineering sense, um, figures and tables that are used in terms of data analysis, uh, even computer code as a, as a visual component that um, it's difficult to actually write about. It might be easier to, to point things out and to talk about it on screen. Um, there's the opportunity for commenting on photographs now these could be actual sort of photography students or they, they could even be photographs of artifacts that, that students produce like here for example um, a pot and we could um, as tutors make, make comments on the, on the work that students submit um, in that format too. Um, and down at the bottom here 
um, thinking perhaps of students who are including conceptual diagrams in their work and perhaps they haven't understood it correctly, we can use video and audio feedback to perhaps explain those things in a more effective way. Um, I've also seen uh, video screen capture technology used um, to provide students with quite detailed feedback um, in the early stages of their study on the quality of the referencing in their written work um, and that worked particularly well. Um, there is a possibility, this has been suggested to me by one or two colleagues, that this type of feedback may also be suited to students who have specific learning needs. So those who str struggle, for example, with, with written work, um, that this kind of feedback may be in a format that's more helpful to them. But that's an area that I think needs uh, further exploration and research. Okay, so just to finish off, um, a few main points that I hope you'll take away with you uh, from this short presentation. Um, this sort of technology is now readily available and it's relatively cheap. Um, it's increasingly reliable, robust and easy to use. It doesn't need a great deal of expertise uh, to be able to make these uh, quick screen captures. Some of the file sizes can be pretty large, but um, the prevalence of broadband internet connections now is enabling us to use it more widely. Do need to remember that uh, we're talking about personal individual feedback here, so you need some kind of personal delivery mechanism, whether that be email, um, or I've made great use of the institutional virtual learning environment and our ePortfolio system uh, to, to give students their, their own personal feedback. I think it's well suited to many types of visual activities, um, anything with a design component, it works particularly well. Um, there may be some possible applications to students with specific learning needs, those who struggle with the, with, with, with the written word. Um, perhaps dyslexic students may benefit from this, but it's something which I think we need to, to look into and do a little bit of research on. There is a certain level of skill to making these recordings and there's a, um, a, it takes a little bit of practice to get used to delivering the feedback in this way, um, which is something that uh, needs to be borne in mind. Um, and finally, you need, you need a quiet private space to be able to do it. I work in a shared office and I find it impossible to make these recordings there. So I do most of my recordings from home. Overall, I think this is a particularly useful technology for particular types of student activity. Um, our task really is to, is, 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 is to use this kind of stuff where we think it's most appropriate.